Container architecture. Trendy, cool, and fit perfectly on an image that millennials feel identified with. They remind you of something technological related to business and economical success, but at the same time, as they are recycled, they seem to be eco-friendly. But are they? Let's talk about their qualities and why in some cases we shouldn't use them. The use of shipping containers has recently become a common architectural trend, and that should be a good thing. There are countless numbers of empty shipping containers waiting and used around docks, as normally it's cheaper to produce new ones than shipping them empty back to their origin. In architectural terms, they provide a module that can be stacked together without major difficulties, highly consistent in structural terms, and most importantly, cheap. Cheap in production, as we are talking about reusing an existing product with a new function, but cheap in construction as well, as it seems to reduce considerably the cost on site. The dream for every eco-friendly architect playing with models. However, even if theoretically all these qualities work perfectly, it's important to consider its downside as well, as the use of them is not always that eco. First of all, there are some practical issues. The normal shipping container has an inside high of less than 2.4 meters, which it's okay for commercial purposes but becomes a major issue for housing. Apart from that, some of these shipping containers has been used to transport chemical products, so in order to reuse them, we have to carefully clean them previously as they can become a hazard. But most importantly, the intervention required to adapt each container to his future use requires a huge amount of energy that is constantly ignored. Even if placing them on site seems quite simple, if we have to replace its interior finishing, or especially as we start to create new openings to make the space suitable for the new use, we increase dramatically its ecological impact. So even if it seems simple in concept, as soon as you have to deal with them, if you are not aware of these issues, the result can be awful. One of these terrible examples can be found in Newcastle, England. Recently, they demolished some buildings, including an old theater in the core of the city, and they filled the gap with a series of shipping containers that preached to create a creative social hub. At least, that's what they promote on their 3D visualization. The problem is that once built, apart from this trendy container looking image, the intervention is not taking any advantage of the potential of these containers. The huge amount of openings and additions to the basic container module works against the eco-friendly image that they pretend to defend, and if we look at the scale and organization of the project, it's easy to recall that a cheaper, better result could be achieved using traditional construction techniques. On the opposite side, with a huge difference in terms of architectural quality, we find the new Starbucks that Kengo Kuma designed in Taiwan. In this case, Kengo Kuma used 29 shipping containers stuck without major extra structure, following basic structural rules. The connection between containers or the openings in general are carefully planned in order to enhance the natural light to the interior of the grid through skylights and single pane windows, reducing the need to cut new openings on the middle of containers. On the same direction, when a higher space is needed, instead of opening the top of the container to extend it, he used the join in between containers, closing the space with glass. Of course, Kengo Kume is one of the greatest architects of our days, but the principles that he's using on the building are not that complicated, so it's not that much about budget and capacity. I truly believe that the so-called container architecture has a huge potential in the coming generation of architects. But it's important to understand the basic rules related to the module, as even if you are using industrial waste, if you are not dealing with them properly, you could be seriously increasing your ecological footprint. So think it twice before starting to design your new project with shipping containers, as in some cases, even if they are not trendy, you can achieve a better, cheaper and eco-friendlier result using traditional methods. Thanks for watching. This video is actually one of a series of architectural topics that I'm planning to explore every week as a part of my PhD research. Feel free to join the debate in Facebook, Instagram and YouTube. And if you enjoy it, don't forget to like and subscribe for more weekly videos.